Margaret Strout from the Buncombe County Health Department. I have Carly Smith here, who is one of our interns, and she and I are going to make a modified Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to make turkey in a crock pot, which is like the easiest thing to do because Thanksgiving is such a busy day. We're going to make what my family calls birdseed dressing. And it's simply whole grains, and it kind of looks like bird seeds, so we decided that was a good name. And you know that good old green bean casserole? We're going to modify it. And Carly is going to make Brussels sprouts that even I like. They were good. So let's get started. Now, the crock pot turkey is really easy. I have got probably two, it was two onions we cut up. It was up. about two onions, yeah. And when I do this sometimes, I will kind of almost puree them in the food processor. Sometimes that's neat. We did them a little bit bigger this time. And I want to say also, whoops, you want to put as many of the seeds or the leaves in. The leaves have a lot of flavor and they're really good. Now, because I am using turkey breasts that are not um, treated in any way. They're a natural turkey breast. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in. The salt does a couple things. It adds flavor, but it also adds some, the salt helps keep the meat with more moisture in it. So I'm going to sprinkle this all over and kind of toss it to kind of get it all coated. And again, this is not, these recipes I have the amount of thyme, rosemary, marjoram, and um, sage, but you're going to flavor them to your preference. Right. Because some people like more, some people like less. I tend to like marjoram or um, rosemary, but not as much rosemary as other people. Now I'm bringing out my crock pot that has been sprayed. I'm going to put about half the vegetables in the bottom. Not quite the whole thing. And then if these are turkey tenders, which is what was available at the store, if you get a whole turkey breast, you want to open it. So it's kind of splayed on there. These are just kind of laid inside. And then I'm just going to sprinkle the rest of this mixture. And let me see. I'm using my God-given spatula to kind of clear it up. The best tools? Yeah, yeah. it's the easiest. I'm, I'm never without it. Um, and then what we're going to do, depending on how, how strong your crock pot is, I don't know another word for it, you can do it on, this one is much hotter. So I would do it on low for probably two to three hours, or high for like two hours, low for probably four, maybe five. You're going to check this. Because if you do it too long, it comes out kind of funny. Makes the meat a little tough. Well, it doesn't make it tough. It just falls apart. Mm. So it's not as, um, it doesn't have the flavor and it doesn't have the good texture. So we're going to take this over. We're going to go to a break and then we're going to start working on the bird seed dressing. All right. Sound good? Sounds great. Visit your local tailgate market and fall in love with the freshest, best tasting food around. Find your farmer at mountainmarkets.com. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. OK, 
okay, now we're going to make bird seed dressing. Now, I made this a number of years ago, and I kind of modified my mother's recipe. She always used rye bread, and it was usually Jewish rye bread, so it has caraway. So to me, caraway is part of dressing. You can put it in or not, depending on what you want to do. I have some wheat berries here, and they take about an hour or so to cook. You can pre-soak them, but a lot of times these can, you know, just kind of simmer on the stove while you're doing your other stuff, you know, if you want to go shopping or whatever. This is rye berries, and I'm also going to use wild rice. Now, the wick food for this would be brown rice, and that takes about 45 minutes to cook. So you want these berries to cook for about 15 minutes before you add the brown rice. I prefer um, wild rice. I'll put that in. Now, part of the reason I put the brown rice and everything is you get the different colors. And that's kind of fun. Um, so, I'm going to put some chicken broth in. Now, I make my own chicken broth. So, I am going to add salt to this simply because my chicken broth is not salted. If you use a store-bought chicken broth, don't salt it. It will be too much. To simmer a grain, you need to steam it. So you want to put this on the stove, get it kind of boiling a little bit, and then turn it down so it simmers. And again, this is going to cook for about an hour. Then we're going to add the vegetables, the herbs, and the quinoa. The quinoa takes about 15, 10, 15 minutes to cook. If you put it in now, you'd have mush. Not so good. we don't want mush. Not good. We want something fun and nutrient dense. Okay, let's get this started. Visit your local tailgate market and fall in love with the freshest, best-tasting food around. Find your farmer at mountainmarkets.com. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. <laughs> Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Well, welcome back. We're gonna finish off the last of the birdseed dressing. And it really does look like birdseed. I have my grains and they're cooked. You can just take a piece of one, one of the wheat berries or one of the rye berries and just kind of taste it and see if it's tender. I'm adding my quinoa, and as I said, it cooks a little more quickly. And then I'm going to add my celery. I like celery and onion for Thanksgiving. I mm -hmm. think celery and onion, without celery and onion, you yeah. just kind of don't have Thanksgiving. You can make this a vegetarian meal or a vegetarian dressing if you want to. You just use vegetable broth as opposed to chicken broth. And you can even make your own vegetable broth. There's a little rosemary, and as I said, the caraway is my preference, so I put it in. I love caraway. And then there's some marjoram, a little bit of sage, and some thyme. Mm. And again, you don't want to put too much marjoram because it, it sometimes tastes piney. It'll overpower it. It really will, and you don't want piney dressing. <laughs> You want to pine for it, but not have piney dressing. Okay, we're going to cook this for just a tad longer, and then we are going to have Thanksgiving dinner. All right. Two outs with a runner on first base. Now the big guy comes out the back. 
hitting 342 with 92 RBIs and 36 homers. Chill raw and prepared foods promptly. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. And we're back. So I'm making Brussels sprouts. Yes. And not everyone likes them, but this is a recipe where they're really good. And you said you e don't even, like them. Yes, and um, I'm going to be I your test like case. Recipe. So um, this is the Brussels sprout, uh, how you'll buy it in the store. And this is a fresh Brussels sprout. And what I did with them was just wash them off and peel off the outside couple layers of kind leaves. Kind of like cabbage. Yeah. But just itty bitty. Yeah, get the bad ones off and then just cut that bottom piece off and cut them in half. So here we've got all of our Brussels sprouts. Okay. And for this recipe, it's really easy. You just put them in a pan and we're using a cast iron pan here. So you add a little bit of oil. Just enough to coat them real good. Yeah, and then some salt and pepper. Use your muscles for this pepper grinder. Hey, no wimpy stuff in my house. And I'm just going to toss them and get the oil all around. And after this, we're just going to throw them in the oven. It's set at 400 degrees. And we're going to roast them for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes and toss them every now and then just to make sure they get evenly browned. Okay. Can you do it on top of the stove if you want to, if you needing a little bit? Um, yeah, you could do them on the stove top and that'll just give them a little bit different flavor. Roasting them gets like a more rich flavor oh, yeah, in there. The caramel so, comes out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah, you could do them on the stove top as well and just keep tossing the pan around and getting them cool. evenly brown. Wonderful. All right, and we're going to finish up the Brussels sprouts. And I must say, they smell good. Good, that's the beginning of them tasting good. So uh, what we're going to do is add a little bit of raisins. I think you also said you can use the cran raisins, the dried cranberries. Yeah, just something sweet to add a little bit okay. more to them. I would think cranberries would be kind of fun for Especially Thanksgiving. Especially for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have some toasted almonds that we toasted up right in a pan on top of the oven. Yeah. And you want to be careful when you do these because you can burn them real fast. So then we're going to add just a little bit of honey, like a tablespoon or so. That must be the, the trick. Yeah, you got to get them all caramelized and yeah. get them tasting good. And then the balsamic vinegar, and that just adds a little bit, um, you know, another layer of flavor in there. Well, balsamic vinegar is fairly sweet, isn't it? For vinegar, it's the sweet. Yeah, vinegar. it's got a little bit more sweetness to it. So um, what I do with this is just shake it up again. We're going to add it right to the oven and roast for about five or ten more minutes. Ooh. And then we're going to pull them out and taste them. Cool beans. All right. The WC Farmer's Market is located on a 36-acre site overlooking the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains and Biltmore State. It is located in Asheville, North Carolina, which is within a two-hour drive of a tremendous volume of horticultural products. 
There are three kinds of produce markets, wholesale, retail, and farmers. The WC Farmers Market has a blend of all three. We are located in the heart of the apple and tomato production areas and close to the South Carolina peach production area. You can find the whole alphabet of fruits and vegetables at the WC Farmers Market, from apples to zucchini, as well as mountain crafts, jams and jellies, ornamental plants, flowers, baked goods, and honey. The market is a wonderful place to find farm fresh, fine ripened, and tree ripened produce at a reasonable price. WNC Farmers Market is conveniently located off Interstate 40 at exit 47 and off Interstate 26 at exit 33 in Asheville. Our address is 570 Brevard Road. Whether you are looking to stretch your food budget, entertain your friends, or family, please come out and visit the market and make it a regular part of your place to shop for fresh produce. The West Asheville Library, conveniently located on Haywood Road, is in close proximity to many great local shops, popular restaurants, and parks. Originally opened in 1953, the library moved into their new building next door to their original site in 1997. Not only does the library feature a large selection of adult, teen, and children's literature, they also feature a Hispanic outreach center, a strong video collection, internet and Wi-Fi access, a branch newsletter, computer study areas, and many adult programs with strong literary and regional culture components. The library also houses a large children's section and a 75-seat community room that hosts everything from summer reading programs, story times, seasonal tax assistance, to even community meetings. And like all the Buncombe County libraries, if they don't have the book you're looking for, they can always order it through their interlibrary book delivery program for your convenience. The West Asheville Library is a great family destination with their many weekly story times. They have their regular story time for children of all ages on Thursdays at 11 a.m., a toddler time for 18 months to three years of age on Wednesdays at 11 a.m., and a mother goose time for infants aged three months to 18 months on Mondays at 11 a.m. They also have Spanish-English story times available upon request. The West Asheville Library is also involved in the West Asheville History Project, containing recordings of oral histories from citizens who have lived in West Asheville their entire lives. It also features newspaper clippings and information about the history of West Asheville to track how much it has changed in the past 100 years. The West Asheville Library is located at 942 Haywood Road. Their hours of operation are Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information, give them a call at 828-250-4750 or check out buncombecounty.org slash library. Okay, we're back. Now, I want to talk a little bit about making your own breadcrumbs. I've in the past talked about making your own chicken broth, which I do on a regular basis. What you can do is, now I'm going to be honest, I don't like the heels of bread. I think you and I talked about this, neither of us do. So I always take the heel of the bread and I put it in the oven just to dry out. And then you can either put this in a plastic bag and roll it with a rolling pin or put it through a blender or a food processor and you come out with these wonderful whole wheat breadcrumbs that are perfectly good, they don't go bad, and that way you can use them for recipes like this. Now, green bean casserole is one of the favorites of the world, I think, or at least Americans. Um, I've got green beans here. I like the frozen green beans. Do you prefer canned or do you like frozen? I like frozen better. Okay. And I've got the French cut. Sometimes you can get the green beans that are really, really skinny. And these are wick food. They go on sale regularly. So get some extras. I'm going to put my lower sodium mushroom soup. Now, if you want to, you can add your own mushrooms. My family does not care for mushrooms and stuff. 
So the little bits of mushroom are perfect for us. Every time I put them in, I get fussed at, so I'm not going to put them in. Um, I kind of like them myself, but you have to kind of go with the preferences of your family. And again, mushrooms are a wick food. Okay, now I'm going to put this in a casserole that I have sprayed with pan coat just because sometimes, you know, stuff happens. In the past, I have just sprinkled, I need this, might as well use the same thing. I just put the onions on top and then I put the breadcrumbs on top. But I think I'm going to try, I'm a little different this time. The breadcrumbs on top works quite nicely. And I'm going to kind of mush my onions apart and I'm going to sprinkle the breadcrumbs on. And I think if I mix the breadcrumbs, and I don't measure these, you just kind of put whatever you think is appropriate, kind of coat them a little bit. And again, we have whole wheat bread. We've got our good onions. Onions are pretty nutritious, aren't they? Yeah, they do a lot of good things for your heart and everything like that. You've been in school more mm -hmm. recently than I have, so I think you probably know more. And I'm going to use my handy spatula. There's a little pun in that, I'm sorry. And put the, less rest, woo, put the rest of the breadcrumbs on there. We're going to put this in the oven for you know, 45 minutes or so till it gets good and golden brown and bubbly. See, this is really easy. It's as easy as using the canned um, French onion, French fried onions. And you're talking a lot fewer calories and a lot more nutrition. I think we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Black Mountain Library, located at 105 North Doherty Street in the town of Black Mountain, is a cozy neighborhood library with an easy walking distance to local restaurants, antique shops, and parking. Originally built in 1968, the library was renovated back in 2009, expanding their children's area, adding new restrooms, and reorganizing the floor plan for a more efficient use of space. The library also has an energy efficient roof structure and lighting system. The Black Mountain Library is home to over 40,000 items in their collection, including books, books on tape and CD, music on CDs and cassettes, videos, DVDs. There is also access to a copy machine and public internet. Want to buy books inexpensively? The library has an ongoing Friends book sale in their lobby with all proceeds going back to the library. They also have a large, comfortable magazine and newspaper reading area to unwind. If you're looking for a place for training or a community meeting, the Black Mountain Library has a great 120-seat community meeting room available to the public. It's also the room where they host their weekly story times for children. They have a Mother Goose story time for children aged 4 months to 18 months on Tuesdays at 11.30 a.m. and a regular story time for children of all ages on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 10.30 a.m. Plus, throughout the summer, children are welcome to take part in the Children's Community Garden. The Black Mountain Library's hours of operation are Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. For directions or contact information, check out our website at buncombecounty.org slash library. Welcome back. We get to eat. Yay. Now, I want to say that Thanksgiving dinner is not complete without something a little bubbly. This is a, a, a sparkling juice. <laughs> Whoops. So we're going to have our fancy wine glasses and a little bit of fizz, which is kind of fun. And we've decorated with some candles. And I have these little candle holders. And I just put popcorn in it. You could put multicolored popcorn if you wanted to. I like a lot of different colors. That's pretty. You could put wild rice in there. You could. Or, you know, I found at one of the stores when I was buying the quinoa, they have brown, red, and white 
quinoa. So if you did that, it would be kind of an interesting color mixture. Now, let's move our napkins over so we can get to our plates. Um, do you want to, I'll, we'll pass. Do you want to do that? Sure. Here, I'm going to take just a, a little bit of turkey. Whoo! It's escaping. Now I saved the rest of the vegetables for soup because that's going to add a lot to some soup. All right, and I'm going to try Brussels sprouts. I think you're going to like them. All right, I'm, I'm willing. All right, now I'm just taking a little bit of everything because I don't want to get too, too full. And this is the birdseed dressing, which it really does look like birdseed, doesn't it? Does. it? But that's kind of fun, and it's, it's a fun, more nutritious thing, and it's very colorful on the plate. And then I kind of mixed up our green bean casserole, and I'm going to take a smidge of that as well. And of course, we have to have cranberry sauce. A little bit here. And a little bit of gravy. And there All we right. go. Oh, you got it? Mm -hmm. Let me know when you're ready and we can start eating. Now we're eating a very moderate Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner. <laughs> yes. Even that smells wonderful. It does. I'm excited to try okay. it all. All right. All right. Drum roll, please. I'm going to try a Brussels sprout. <laughs> good. Mm. Huh? These are good. And I, I really don't like Brussels sprouts, so I've found a way I can eat them. Yeah, I think anyone would like those. Mm. And you can buy them with your wick. Yes. The green beans, the onions, all turkey is great. Mm-hmm. Isn't it nice? It's tender. And it was so easy. Mm-hmm. Mm. You don't want to cook it too long or it really will come out kind of a funky texture. Mm. All right, let me know what you think of that. Very good. It, it has a lot of different textures. You the can taste bears that are kind of... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I do like caraway. I hope you do. The, the neat thing about the quinoa is kind of they have the little berry or the little seed, but they also have a little ring, which is kind of fun for kids. You know, they got to find the ring. All right, let me know about my green new age green bean casserole. What do you think? Same Pretty flavor. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And the amount of fat, I looked at green bean, the fried um, onions, and they have like 70 calories for a teaspoonful or a tablespoon, a couple tablespoons. And more than half of that was fat. Mm -hmm. mm. All comes from that canned green bean or the canned onions. And this is all wick foods except for the cream of mushroom soup. Mmm, delicious. That is good. I can't believe how much I like these Brussels sprouts. I'm going to have to have this recipe as a uh, regular <laughs> staple in our mm -hmm. house because they're so good for you, and I really did not care for them. Yeah. Boy, if you cook things right, you really can have good food. And some Shall we do a cheers? Yes. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, or any other time of the year. That's right. Enjoy. This is from the Bunk We're from the Buncombe County Health Department. We care about you. We want you to have a good, healthy holiday season and enjoy yourself.